Hi, I'm Daniel, and this is Asheville Weekly, episode 55. We're trying something new this time. We're ready for action at any point. In and out on a quick one. Well, the cutting edge ain't gonna fit in there. Oh. I'm happy and relieved at the same time. I'm lucky for my videographer, Dan, who is getting wet. I did bring my famous baseball helmet. If we blast it off and give it a clean and put a bit of paint on it, that'll protect it. Very interesting. I've never looked at one up close. That's a bit small, so I ain't gonna lie. I am taking liberties. I'm here all week, guys. <laughs> again. Unfortunately for everyone, it's gonna be a very long day. Monday and we're in the yard. Saw sure last week we were making these for the new training room. Well, they're made, but what we're doing, we're just tidying them up a bit. We're taking a lot of the sharp edges off them. So when they're underneath the table, people walking past, they won't hit themselves. We've also ordered a load of M10 bolts because we're gonna bolt these to the structure of the container. We should be finished with these in the next hour or so. In other news this morning, I was having a look at some RSJs. I found some nine meter ones that I wanna use, but we're gonna use the burning gear and cut them in half. They're gonna be used for what you saw last week as the supports for the material bays. Having to think about how we can do things better, how we can continue with our branding. And I had a thought about some number plates for some lorries, but I don't have time to go and do that in the moment. I'm gonna to speak to my man um, who deals directly with the DVLA and see if we can't bring some of those plates into existence. I have a Zoom call in a minute and I have to be at the sticker man's house at 11 a.m. to film for his video. While I'm there, I'll probably do some filming myself with my small handheld. I know you like it when I do those. You feel like more in touch with me, like you're in the room. Tomorrow is gonna be a jam-packed day. This entire week is flat out. Imagine that tomorrow we're in the yard. Then I'm looking at a tour of a wash plant in Tilbury. After I have a look at that wash plant, I'm back in the yard. Then we're gonna go to QPR. Then from QPR, we're gonna go up north. We're gonna wake up very early in the morning. We're gonna go to the quarry at 7 a.m. and we're gonna film a review of a 150 ton machine. Then we're gonna make our way back down. Probably be too late to do anything in the yard. Thursday morning up bright and early in the yard. Then I have lunch in the city of London. Then I need to try and come back. And on Friday, I'm meant to be going to the demolition awards. No, we haven't won anything and we're not nominated, but I have been invited. So everybody always invites me everywhere and I tend not to go. So I'm gonna make a real effort to try and get there. And for now, that's about it. We'll reconvene later. Oh, actually, something else I'm trying to do, I'm trying to sort out our new bagging equipment. Now, I'm trying to talk to people and I'm trying to get a second-hand unit to add to the bagging plant that we already have. But everyone's trying to sell me brand new. They don't want to listen. Like, I've got this and it does, and this is everything it does. I just want this hopper and the conveyor belt, which is going to load it and I'm going to connect them together so they work at the same time. No. Nobody's listening to what I say. No, 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 you need brand new. Do you have second hand? No, we don't have second hand. Everyone's too busy. So everyone's trying to sell me something completely brand new. And I'm trying to get something which is used so we can put it in place. We can see how it works. It's a bit of a challenge working with salesmen sometimes. Everything is sell, sell, sell. And they want me to buy, buy, buy. But I'm trying not to do that. I want to buy it. I want to spend money. But I want to get a used one because that's what we need at this present moment in time. This video is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Stop using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. Get your shrubbery under control with the luxury grooming kit featuring the Lawnmower 4.0 and the Weed Whacker trimmers. Manscaped has created the world's first all in one grooming kit that has you covered from head to toe. Literally. The Lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof and cordless and has the latest in skin safe technology that helps reduce nicks and cuts in your sensitive areas. It's got an LED light for trimming on those cold, dark, wet winter mornings. The Weed Whacker has 360 rotary blades with the same skin safe technology, which eliminates tears and tugs in your nose and ears. Anti chafing ball deodorant, ball spray toner. Nice. For a limited time, you'll get two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. The Shears 2.0 is a four-piece essential grooming kit. To get 20% off plus free international shipping and two free gifts, visit manscaped.com forward slash Asheville and use my code Asheville20. The link is in the description below. I am at the Sticker Man's house and I'm standing in his lovely kitchen. 
and what a kitchen it is. Straight away, I'm looking at the worktop, but it's not like a granite worktop like you've seen in the past or a marble worktop. It is a ceramic worktop. You see veins in it as if it's a natural stone, but it's not. The great thing about it, in certain areas of this kitchen, like between the island top and the downstand, the veins actually carry on down the side and they fitted it very nicely with mitered edges, as you would expect. In this area here, we have used the ceramic material on the wall and then over here, we are gonna have a glass copper splashback. All of these cupboards up here are electronic. So you press the middle of it to open and there's a button on the side here to press it to close it. On the other side of the kitchen over here, we have fridge. Then we have a wine cooler, then we have freezer, and next to it we have a steam oven and a normal oven. On the worktop, we are gonna have a pop-up here where they can charge all of their electronics, like their phones, and maybe plug in a kettle or a toaster. Out of the ceramic worktop, two cutting boards have been made, and these cutting boards can actually go in the microwave as well, so it's really cool. The doors are actually pocket doors, so while it looks like they open normally, they tuck in down the side, which is also fantastic. There is a copper profile going on all the handleless doors. When you have a look at the internals, it is chipboard. So you can see here it is chipboard, but this chipboard is slightly different in that it is a lot more dense than standard kitchens that you may see from a standard manufacturer. So it's 19 mil overall. So we have a veneer on both sides and it is veneered on the top, but while chipboard, it's a lot more dense. So definitely a lot better quality. Now this area of the kitchen, there's gonna be another piece of worktop that's slightly higher with legs which go down to the floor. That's because there will be a breakfast bar in this area out of the same ceramic material. This means that when you are cooking here, you can serve everyone who's here who is sat up at a large, lovely breakfast bar. And to make things even better, the dining room table is made out of the same material of this worktop and that will be over there. <laughs> Over there. <laughs> and there is the sticker man himself. I've just finished filming for his video. <coughs> Click here to watch that video. Yanni's gone a bit more in depth than I am and he's gonna be doing house updates every week or every other week or how often? Three more left. Yanni's got three more house updates left, so I'm just coming here for meetings to see Dudek, hence the reason I didn't bring my camera through because I am in and out on a quick one. Before I leave this kitchen area, the wall behind me, what you can see, doesn't have a coat on it. So these walls, they have a first coat. They're gonna get the second one today, but the wall behind me doesn't have anything. That is because it's gonna have this. This is a sample of the feature that's gonna be on it. It's gonna be copper to match the copper features on the kitchen and the copper glass splashback. I like that, very nice. Out in the garden, let's take a look at the swimming pool. So the swimming pool is all connected and it is running. The jets are working as well. We're just running a test. So we've pressure tested all the pipes. Everything is in the plant room and we are good to go. We're just removing some water around the side and we are dropping shingle in as well. And we should be finished in this area. The paving will start next week. The back of the house has the security lighting there as well. It's a lot of light and it's gonna light up like QPR stadium on the night game. Hopefully we can show a cutaway of QPR playing at night wearing the Asheville kit. Nice. In this room on the ground floor, which you've seen before, this little kitchen area is complete and the bathroom is complete as well. We're just storing furniture. So furniture has started arriving at this house now. So we are getting to the end of this build. In this room, we have wallpaper. Twinkle, twinkle, little star wallpaper. This is the playroom progressing nicely. Again, all the furniture has begun to be delivered. Dudek in the house, of course. I'm trying to convince Dudek to come to the yard on Sunday to put some steels up in the backyard for the new bays. Dudek, what do you say? Maybe. Maybe, yeah, that's not the answer I wanted. <laughs> in the hallway, we have a first coat on the walls so you can see the gray. See, a lot of people thought it was gonna be very dark in here, but with all the lighting and the very light gray color palette, it does look rather bright. Up the stairs we go. Again, the gray has continued on the first floor. And at this sort of level, you can see the low level lighting very well. In this bedroom, the lights are on and we have the wallpaper on the walls looking good. The radiator is back on as well. Oh, I'm happy and relieved at the same time at the progress. We're doing so well and it looks so nice. Walk-in wardrobe looking good as well. All done. Radiator back on the wall. Really like this shelving. Just have to do the second fix of the electrics in here. Carpet and we will be done. I've shown you this bathroom in the past many times and I remember saying it was a labor of love when we were doing all the cuts and mitering all the edges. And now with the lighting on, you see that it was all worth it. Look at that. That is fantastic. That is what you call 
a bathing experience. What a bathroom this is. Another view of the hallway on this level. A little bit of filling and sanding, electrics happening, stairs painted on this level as well, looking good. Last week you saw the cupboard behind me all covered up and I couldn't show it to you, but this week I can. Uh, no handles, cat nails. Fantastic bit of storage in the bedroom. And in the bathroom, the sink has been taken off because there is a new sink going on, which will match the toilet. But again, you can see these bathrooms with lighting, which I haven't been able to show you in the past. And just before I leave the room, let's see if it's soft close. Nice. Up the stairs we go, top floor. You can also see the low level LED lighting looking good. And up here in the ceiling, you can see more LED lighting. It looks very bright here. So the gray color palette doesn't make any of the rooms look dark at all. And the black doors stand out as a feature. In this room, second fix is nearly complete and we can see all the cool little lighting features. And you can see from the way the electrics are done that of course we planned where the bed was going. So we have sockets, switches, power points and lights on either side of the bed. The black bathroom on the top floor. So we've cleaned out the bathroom completely and now we are fitting the shower screens. That's it from the sticker man's house. It's time for me to get back to the yard, but I'm gonna call the yard first and see if there's any bits I can collect on the way back. Cause while I'm over this side of London, if there's anything we urgently need and I don't wanna wait for a delivery cause I need to get something back out on the road or back working, now is the time to do it. Stop the capital plant on the way back. And of course, what can I see? I can see a van. Yes, I can see a van, but somehow, I have to try to put a cutting edge in this, but I see a van over there. Thank you, Peter. Well, the cutting edge ain't gonna fit in there. I have failed on this mission. I managed to get a 45 mil pin for the digger. I can't take the cutting edge with me. I'm not happy about that, but what can I do? Now it's time to get back to the yard. Back in the yard, it's 5.35. As you will see, this cover works perfectly. Unlucky for my videographer, Dan, who is getting wet. Nice area for me to stand. Don't get wet unless the wind starts blowing, but if it does, then I just stand here. I'm nice and dry. Just to answer a few of the questions people had, the scaffold you've seen in a new repair bay, we have bought it to keep it. We are not renting it, otherwise we'd be paying infinite amounts of money on a weekly basis after 12 weeks. So that scaffold is ours. Any scaffold you see in this yard, which has been erected, that is ours to keep and we have bought it. It's Tuesday morning, I am not in the yard anymore. I was there earlier, but I've had to leave because I have a meeting at 11 a.m. I'm gonna have a look at a wash plant. Yep, very interesting. I've never looked at one up close, so I wanna see how it works and I'm gonna get a tour around the site. In other news last week, you saw me talking about a deal which I had nearly done and then there was a final party where it didn't work. Well, to tell you a little bit more, I have two or three sources of material and I'm looking to run material into the yard. However, we cannot get any trains. So I have the home for the material. I have the source for the material. I have the price to sell it agreed. I have the price to collect it agreed, but I cannot get any trains. I am being told by freight operators that I'm looking at January. Now what on earth am I gonna do with promises about January? We have a business that needs to run now and we need volume of work to keep us going. So in the past, the problem was trying to find a source and generating work. Now we have all of that, the problems is trains. This is because of the amount of material that's required for HS2 and the demand for construction in general has gone through the roof. So everybody who made deals with freight operators and promised them on contracts, we're gonna run three trains a week for the next 12 months in order to get good rail deals. They did well because now they are the only ones who have trains and we are struggling. In other news, we have had a uniform order at the yard, which I'm gonna check out later. And finally, Terry, Cam and Flo are doing some training in the yard of the man-safe system. So they're learning how to use it. Uh, with the three of them using it, they'll be able to teach me and everyone else in the yard, i.e. the drivers and the boys who work in the yard, how they use the system. So I'm down at Tilbury Docks, right on the water. What a place to work. So you can bring in stuff by the dock, by boat, and then ship it round to here and move it on the train. Or you can bring stuff on the train and bring it round there and then take it out by boat at the dock. So they have every single mode of transportation here possible and they're trying to create a sustainable future. My hat goes off to them. This is some setup. This is definitely something that Asheville can aspire to do. I need to jump back in the car. I'm gonna go and have a look at a hopper. Possibly I can try to send a lorry to go and collect it if they'll sell it to me at a good price. And then I've got to get back 
back to the yard, QPR layer, and then heading up north. Just having to think while I'm driving about the yard where I just was and the setup makes me think about how far ahead some of these companies are from Asheville. The fact of the matter is I have to accept that Asheville do not have the resources at this moment in time to do what these companies are doing, but it does give me something to aspire to. But there's a massive gap between us and them. We can still provide all the same services, so that's something but infrastructure wise we have a very long way to go and hopefully i can share the journey with you guys and we can get there one day now let's get cutting this steel Now we're over at Walsh's yard, and not only did I get inspiration from the setup there, I'm trying to make this trip really work for me. So here, they have a hopper and frame system. I'm gonna take this system, turn it round, stand it up, and this has got a double hopper here. What I like is that it's an entire frame, and it's up nice and high, and the shovel should be able to load it. Let's hope we can make something work. That's, that? that's, a double that's, X. No, that's one X. That's one X. That looks a bit small, so I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I like spray on stuff, you know. <laughs> what size is this? What's it? Oh, sorry, man, this is single X, man. I can change it to a double X. Yeah, let me just see these. Oh, these look decent. We had a delivery of uniform and we've gone with the new logos. As Simon is modeling here, see it there? <laughs> How do we like the yellow? The yellow on the orange? How do we like it, Si? That's nice. Yeah? yeah? Simon's not complaining, Simon's happy enough. Simon is getting everyone to sign to say that they had uniform and what size uniform they had because next week they're going to turn around and they won't be in full orange and everyone will say, I never got no uniform. I never got no uniform. You did get uniform and here's where you signed for it. So you kind of lost it in one week. Please don't blame the cat. Don't blame the dog. Please don't blame your wife or your husband or your partner. Don't blame the washing machine. You have been given uniform. Orange uniform, all high vis for you to wear. So please keep wearing them, everyone at Asheville. These are a medium. They're a medium, yeah. They're a medium. You're, you're yeah, but sorry, I like to. All right, you're gonna get me a different size T-shirt. I'm trying to tell Simon. I don't know if I'm this extra large right there, but boy, I'm not gonna lie. When I've tried to fit the quad in there, certain times get a little bit, of, a little bit of pushback on the trousers. But boy, I will try these as well. Nice. What you want? New uniform, yeah? What, look, wait, George, I've never seen you look so smart. Boy, new uniform there, Asheville. People are looking fresh. Now you can see this area and we have had a proper clean up and this is all usable space. We still have a little bit of a clean up to do, but after we do the steels to hold up the walls, we're then gonna come over here and start concreting. Glad I saw a hopper earlier, what I can try and do some work on, but having a look at it, I think that we can break it apart and put something together and find a way to make it work. Then the only thing I'm gonna need is some sort of funnel at the bottom 
and a conveyor belt and possibly a shed. I know it looks like I'm messing around, but it is a hell of a lot cheaper. A bagging station like what I'm talking about is somewhere in the region of about 50K. If I can get a few of these bits and pieces and put them together and probably spend two weeks trying to make it, I am definitely quids in. While bagging isn't something we're used to, we haven't done it in the past on a grand scale and we're looking to up our game. So while we're looking to up our game, let's put something together, make it work, see how it goes. And then when we want to step up to that next level, then possibly we'll invest in something a bit newer. Yes. My lift has arrived. You've seen in the past, uh, when we're going up north, we all jump in the car together and we make a road trip of it. Well, today I'm doing something a little bit different. While I'm driving, I can't work, I can't think. The guys film me, but really I'm not thinking properly and I could be using that time for other things. We're trying something new this time. We are going for an executive minibus. So me, Frighty, Jay, AKA James, AKA Leroy, and Ara, the creative mind at Asheville, we're all gonna jump in this and we're gonna travel up together in this. And hopefully while we're in here, we can do some brainstorming. They have Wi-Fi, we can work on a laptop. They've got PlayStation, although people ain't playing PlayStation. There's more important things that we could be doing. We can be going over the script. We can use the time effectively on the way there and the way back. But me, just being me, you know I can't do any half measures. I am taking liberties. So it's meeting me here, taking me to my house. From my house, we're then going to QPR. Gonna leave QPR, jump back in here, come back to the yard, meet the guys from here. We're going to go up to the hotel. From the hotel in the morning, we're going to go to the quarry. And then from the quarry, we're going to make our way back down and come here. So I won't see my car for about 24 hours. And let's see what sort of difference this can make. It's half past six and I'm not in the yard. I'm in a hotel in North Lancashire. Bus is here, just waiting for the lads to come down. They're meant to come down at seven. So hopefully a few of them come down early. Once again, I couldn't sleep. Came downstairs, used my phone, brainstorming, tried to put some extra ideas and kind of questions in the script for this video also. So hopefully the guys will be down soon. We're gonna go and get a very strong coffee because we didn't get here till 10 past two last night. So I've had about three odd hours sleep by the time I actually put my head down. Let's get this day started, get on the road as soon as possible. And finally, finally, we should be in that 150 ton digger. On the way to grab a coffee, thought I'd point out, the entire video team, everyone today is in full orange, head to toe. One, because it's safe. Two, because that is required of us uh, being in this sort of working environment. And three, because I don't want to give anyone any excuses when we get there, say, you can't do this or you can't do that, or you're gonna have to wait and you're gonna have to do this or that, or let us try and find something that fits you. Because they most definitely won't find anything to fit me or Friday. Maybe Jay, yeah. But I will say, yeah, I really do feel like Will's missing out. Will would love being up here. So Will, you have to hurry up and come back so you can come and experience some of the things we're doing. Could I have a, a large, fresh filtered black coffee, please? Milk can you filter? Uh, just a drop, please. Just to cool it down a little bit so I don't burn my face off. Can I get a caramel macchiato? Can you give again? Yes, please. No. Yeah, can I get um, a decaf oat milk latte? We're in a Starbucks drive through and the 18 van wasn't available, so we're just rolling through with the door open. We're ready for action at any point. Even though we're beginning to run slightly late, we're ready. <laughs> Almost nice. <laughs> Let's get some coffee in us so we're charged and ready for today. So we're in the car park and we're gonna head down to the quarry. We cannot take this vehicle there. It's gotta be four by four vehicle and we're gonna split it up into two journeys. So half the video team will go down with some of the technicians and then they'll come back and get me and then we'll go down again, but it is a couple of miles. But thankfully the editors from Awesome Earth Movers are here and they've brought me some hard copies. Mum, I just got these today and I'll be delivering these as soon as I can. And obviously you need um, an entire shipping container to ship this to St. Lucia for my family because nobody in St. Lucia can read online. We need hard copies. 
So we're in the 4x4 and we are entering the lion's den. This is all very exciting. I still don't know what to expect. I've been waiting for this for a long time. I'll say, James, how long have I been waiting for this? Over a year. We've been waiting for over a year to get into this quarry to use this machine. Trouble is, while I'm here, I want to know everything that's going on. I want to know what they're mining for. I want to know what they're doing. I want to know how they're processing it. I want to know how this machine works. I want to know the size of the engine and what this machine is actually capable of. Unfortunately for everyone, it's going to be a very long day. We are here. Obviously safety first here. Putting on my safety glasses. No doubt I'm gonna get a call for the remake of Blades because I don't think the Wesley Snipes is available anymore. Full orange, hard hat, protective eyewear, ready to go. <laughs> We're waiting to get filming, but there's a lot of waiting around. And the uh, quarry manager has said we have to stick together. If this was a horror movie, I'm sure that I'll be the first one to go. And if this was like some sort of Jurassic Park film, maybe the Velociraptors are in the high bushes here and we're gonna get picked off one by one. So we're gonna abide by the rules for now because we don't wanna get slung out and uh, play the waiting game. Oh, I do like to sit beside the seaside. Oh, I do like to sit beside the sea. Well, it does look like I'm sitting on those rocks that act as a crash barrier for the large waves. You couldn't actually use these rocks because the salt water would continually eat them. You actually need to use a granite rock for those crash barriers. <sighs> it's definitely been a rocky start to the day. But I can tell you that I think today will be groundbreaking. <laughs> Get it? Rocky, groundbreaking. I'm here all week, guys. <laughs> Should have dropped it. That's fine. Just stay where you are. Yes. Are you not in? Are you not in Diagra? No, it's trains anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Better? Yeah, look. Yeah. Well, I did bring my famous baseball helmet, but the quarry were frowning upon it and they've provided me with one of these. And I want to thank these guys on the front for actually letting us in here and letting us use all this kit. Here we go. You can see the size of the machine. Look at the gear we have to get just to change a pin. It's pouring down with rain. I'm going to destroy all of my cameras. I need all new kit. Well, what can I do? I can't miss this opportunity. And guess what? We're completely sold out of Asheville umbrellas. And here's my plug. The umbrellas will be back soon in the Asheville shop and the soft toys and the mugs and the teas. Okay, we're just finishing up. We're filming up here. It's 1.26. I've had a picture from from the yard, the hopper I showed you yesterday in Walsh's yard, uh, Ross has already managed to deliver it, I didn't even know. He sent me a picture of it, but that picture was from it being in our yard already. So when I get back, I'm gonna have a look at that. It was challenging today. Uh, for a large part of the day, it was raining, absolutely drenched, probably gonna get ill from it, but definitely worth it. We still have a long ride home. The drone was badly affected by the wind as well. We had some issues with the audio. I think the jack plug got wet and we couldn't have audio properly. So there may be some of the footage which doesn't actually have the audio so we're really going to have to try and piece it together but it's a one in a lifetime experience to come all the way here to use the 150 tonner and i have been waiting for a year so we did what we could and we're just going to try and make it work in the edit on our way out of the quarry we're just following the conveyor belt all the way back to the main entrance if ever i saw a shed that's a fine shed that is a fine shed Oh, is that, is that where the fines are going? <laughs> so it is a fine shed. Double entendre there, you like that. Wheel wash number one. This looks very similar to the Asheville wheel wash. Very similar. So much security. We're back in the land of the living. We can't get in that lovely Mercedes like this. So we're gonna have to work out a separate plan and stop at a service station for some food. I'm absolutely drenched. I feel like a drowned rat. <laughs> it's Thursday and I'm in the yard. Having a look at it, I'm quite pleased with my purchase and there is now a plan in place. So stay with me. The structure of it 
is completely fine, thankfully. And while it looks a bit rusty, if we blast it off and give it a clean and put a bit of paint on it, that'll protect it. So I'm happy enough. But the plan is changed somewhat because before I was talking about one conveyor belt going to feed the other bit of kit that you've seen, but we're not going to do that. So I was thinking of opening up all of these completely and having it as one hopper. No, we're going to leave it as two separate hoppers because it doesn't make a difference, but we're going to funnel them down ever so slightly because this is too much material to dump on a conveyor. And we are going to at first have a straight conveyor belt and then we are going to have an elevated conveyor belt to feed the other small hopper we have with all the weighing equipment on it. We need to give it a clean first and I've decided that we're going to have a couple of viewing platforms around it. So if you imagine, we're going to have a viewing platform made out of scaffold on all three sides and we're going to have a scaffold roof over the top of this. It won't completely protect it from the elements even though it's IP65 rated and all the electrics are waterproof, it just means it will be undercover. So we're going to start with this very soon but before we do this we're going to do some work on the 20 yard bin which is over there which we haven't touched you saw we collected that from isle of dogs a while ago but we've been far too busy to do anything now we're going to turn that over we're going to knock away all the rust from it we have a delivery of three mil plates of steel what's coming today and we're going to start to repair that bin and then hopefully give it a paint and we also have three sheets of two mil aluminium checker plate so i'm going to use those outside my office because the scaffold can get a bit slippery with with mold etc so I want to screw those down so it's nice and safe I have a meeting in King's Cross at 12 o'clock and it's 10 30 on the dot so I'm going to jump in the car and make as many phone calls as I can on the way and then I'll be back in the yard later traffic on the way here oh man it was brutal I was a little bit late for my meeting but not too late meeting went really well I'm now making my way back to the yard from King's Cross Baker Street A40 it should be all the way there straightforward and we all know that it's not going to be i've been told that the bin is about to be just turned over now the 20 yarder and we're going to begin working on that Oh my god, who did that? How did he do that? He doesn't know. He doesn't know? He doesn't know how it happened. Just returned to the yard and I've seen one of the Scania tippers, uh, front light cage, everything's been smashed off it. We asked the person driving it how it happened and he doesn't know. He, do he doesn't know how the lorry got smashed up. We're just stripping the lorry down now and we've got some parts coming. I'm going to try and put it back together because the lorry obviously can't go out on the road like that. The trouble is, until we strip it properly, we don't actually know what's broken. Hopefully the bracket behind, the mountain bracket's not broken. Thank goodness the lorry have a steel bumper. So that steel bumper obviously helped the lorry out a lot, but I just, I, I don't know how you can hit a lorry that hard and not know what happened. Like that's just, I understand things happen. I understand. I would just prefer someone to say, yeah, I did this and then we work it out, but say, I don't know, it just, it just was like that because it wasn't like that. Somebody did something for it to be like that. It's Friday morning, I'm not in the yard. I'm in a taxi on the way to the Royal Lancaster Hotel in Paddington for the demolition awards. So Lee Bear invited me down and a couple of my friends who you know, like Michael O'Donovan, they're down there already uh, in the yard. The parts for the Scania that we stripped down yesterday have arrived, so we're putting that back together.
and it's also Jules's birthday. Now Jules loves to make a fuss at everyone else's birthday. Happy birthday, dear Jay. Dear accountant. <laughs> dear Tessa. So we thought we'd make a fuss over her today. And unfortunately, I cannot be in the yard because I'm here, but I wish Jules a very happy birthday. Hopefully I can make my way through the traffic and get there. I'm already running late, but, but it's not my fault uh, because there's been an accident on the A40 and part of it is closed. So we're gonna have to go the long way around things. That's London for you. You had one job, Dean. You delivered a gate. That is all part of the fun. Oh my God, they've all gone out. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jules. Happy birthday to you. Voila. Thank you. We appreciate you, Jules. Thank you for making everybody's birthdays lovely. So we hope you've had a lovely birthday. Oh, thank you so much, yeah. everyone. Thank you, Jules. Sat in in the yard. Got a little bit of a headache today. Apologies, because yesterday, when I was at the demolition event, I was meant to do a lot more filming for you. There was a lot of people there, Michael O'Donovan, James Gannon, a lot of the bosses from Kerry's, Quattro, Kappa. Great to catch up with everyone, because you don't often have everyone in one place at one time. And it's good to do a bit of networking and information sharing. Like I said, I was meant to do a lot of filming, but the day took a different turn. I ended up uh, visiting multiple establishments and getting home very late. We have a little bit of a problem with the high pressure pump on the road sweeper. Let's show the drawing here. And we're trying to see what we can buy to get it to start working again. Now these people want 140 pound for a set of O-rings. I think that's a bit extortionate. We've changed the spring in it already and it seems to be working, but probably the O-rings are gonna go soon. So we're gonna test it and see how it goes. But the road sweeper has gotta be working because the weather's beginning to get a little bit worse. And now the weather's worse. We don't need the road to be dirty. We continue our work in the railway yard. I'm cleaning as much as I can, flattening in as many levels as I can and I've had a drawing of a conveyor belt system, what I think is gonna work, but I just need to study it a little bit more. Uh, we're talking about a conveyor, and the conveyor has sort of like greedy boards on the side of it to stop any material falling off it. The conveyor also will have hoppers on it, so any material that comes from the larger hopper will catch into this, and we have a straight conveyor here, and when it connects with the second conveyor going up, we'll also have like a catch area there. So if anything fell off the side, it would gather and then be taken back up and uh, making sure that the conveyor belt has the grips on it as well. So other than that, catching up on emails because I wasn't around yesterday. I'm gonna take a walk around the yard and just see what work we can do and how best we can improve as always. Not a chaotic Saturday, but I am happy this week to see that the boys are greasing everything. A lot of the cranes are being greased. The Scania's, which are on r and they have auto greasing systems on them, but the new Volvo tippers that we've got, click here to see a video on how we customize the two of them, they don't. But as I showed you in the past, they have the bushes which you can grease manually. So if we can keep getting grease into those bushes, they should last us a lot longer. Saturday afternoon, it's 5.04. Um, I'm just looking at conveyor belts and I keep trying to explain to everyone exactly what it is I want. And it's just me saying a lot of the time I've got ideas which are in my head. So I had to try and put it onto paper. So here is the plan that I want for our new bagging area. This will um, show everybody exactly what they are pricing and they could specify some things on the conveyor belt that I don't know about. And then I wanna work out if there is some separate fabrication or a shoot we can do at the top here to ensure that the material that comes up the belt, that it does in fact go into this bagging copper here. This is my little plan I've drawn. And guess what? Scania sent me a jacket. I don't know, what do we think of this Scania jacket? It's not in black, but boy, thinks all right, you know? But wearing it around the yard, looking fresh, got a little Scania badge there. It's not quite an Asheville jacket, but let's have, let's have a look at the back of it there. Little Scania bomber there, yeah, I think, I think it's all right. The week is nearly over and about to start because my week starts on a Sunday morning. So Saturday evening, week is nearly over, Sunday morning, the week starts again. 
That's it for Asheville Weekly, episode 55. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to see a video on the current HGV driver shortage crisis in the UK. And click here to see last week's episode, which was number 54. I got my glove on. I might just click my fingers, but I'm not gonna tell you what I'm gonna do.